Good morning. Welcome to my newest vlog. I started The Only One Left by Riley Sager. That's an audiobook and I that I'm listening to and I'm really really liking it. The thrills and the creepiness is brewing and building and I'm really into it and I'm enjoying listening to it. I'm going to be starting Divine Rivals tonight. Um, I keep hearing so many good things about that, so that should be fun. And then the other book that I'm reading is Such Sharp Teeth. If you've read this, let me know. Let me know what you think of this one. I'm kind of, I don't know how to feel about it. I'm enjoying it, but I am not enjoying it as much as I did Cackle. And I don't know if I just keep going. I'm assuming it'll get better. No, it's good enough to keep reading. At this point, it's like a three star book but I don't know how it's going to be as the book goes on, if it's going to become even better or if it'll just stay three star. But this one is a werewolf story, which I've never read before, so that's exciting. Puppy. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Hobby. Such a lover. What you put that over her face for? Oh, I was trying to like give her. <laughs> Look at your puppy. Look at your puppy. Look at baby. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> Today is Friday and Brad and I both have off. Um, we've been doing this kind of like a staggered vacation thing. Um, so today we both had off and um, so we went to a, a lunch. Um, I had like shredded beef tacos that were just so good. It's like this sports bar that we like that's so quiet and tranquil and um, it's just nice to be able to look up and look at the screens and see um, different sports going on and just if we want to have a drink have a drink if not I usually drink like coffee or soda or something um, and yeah it was just really nice and then we went to PetSmart we got this little sweater for Olive isn't that cute? <laughs> she's got her first hoodie <laughs> I'm so excited and then um, somebody on Discord had this cat box. I got it from Martin. Well, obviously, all of wouldn't fit in there. So I'm super excited about that. And then we went to Marshall's. I got Grogu to go with Yoda back here. I think I just need to figure out how to um, raise them up. So that you can see both of them back there but cute right <laughs> I don't care I'm going all out I'm going all out for the holidays and um, I guess I'm gonna have to find something for Grogu to hold when it's not Halloween but oh my gosh a year-round love that we can have out a spiced apple candle It was nice having Brad there with me because he could help me pick out what scent he likes and the one that he picked I really like too. It's like a, it smells like Starbucks hot apple caramel cider. Have you ever had that stuff? It's so good. That's what this smells like to me. It's heaven in a jar. <laughs> and then I just got a couple skincare items. 
But um, then when I got home, I found something in the mail that I had been anxiously awaiting. Um, I got this on eBay and I like shopping on eBay for books because it's a nice way to support smaller bookstores and then also um, just random people that want to sell books that maybe they found somewhere or they don't, um, maybe they have but they don't want to keep or that kind of thing. And it's the Golden Girls Forever. And I used to have this book. <laughs> and um, so, you know, we had to put our cat Zelda down um, almost two months ago now. And she had a lot of kidney and bladder problems for the last, boy, 10 years of her life. I mean, she's always had problems with that. And um, at one point, she peed on my Golden Girls Forever book. And I could never get this mail out. So I finally threw it away. And I told Brad, I need this in my life. You know, you only live once or maybe. And I want to be as happy as I can in my life. And um, I go through Golden Girls over and over and over again. Um, so usually I just watch the whole show and then start back at season one, episode one, and do it over and over and over again. It's just such a nice way to go to sleep at night. I just love them. There's just something so comforting about the Golden Girls. And so what this book is, it talks about behind the scenes information about every episode. And that's why I felt like I have to have this. I could read this every day after and, you know, like read about the episode I just watched the night before. I think that'd be amazing. And this is where I'm actually at is Sophia's Wedding Part 2. I just finished that before I fell asleep last night. Um, and I'm super excited. So it's so cool. It talks about the original air date and what the episode was about. And then it has a bunch of just little trivia and information about the episode. And then I've got this bookmark that my friend Kristen over at Enter the Book sent me. So this will be perfect to keep my spot in the book. And I also, I don't know why I put my glasses on. I wasn't really reading anything. I thought I might be. Um, I wanted to talk to you about a couple books that I have read. I've actually been reading a lot of books and I've got more I want to talk to you about later in this video, but for right now, I just wanted to talk to you about two. Um, I finished Such Sharp Teeth by Rachel Harrison. This book, okay, if, if you read Cackle and you liked it, get this book. Um, I think if you liked Cackle, you just love her. That's how I felt anyway. It was like I just, I didn't get into this as immediately as I did Cackle, but I fell so in love with the book and the characters and just the situation of it. It took about 100 pages for me to really get into it though, and then I couldn't put it down. So this book is about a woman named Rory who is on the way to spend um, the rest of her sister's pregnancy with her sister. They're twins and her sister doesn't want to be alone. Her boyfriend left her and moved out. So she's traveling out there to go be with her sister and stay with her. She took a leave of absence from work and she gets in this accident and she has this weird dream where she gets bit by a werewolf and she doesn't know if it's real or not. <laughs> Was it a dream? Did it really happen? And so a bunch of things start happening after she gets to the town and staying with her sister. And I just loved it. I gave it 4.75 stars. I rounded it up to five. When I read Cackle about three fourths of the way through the book, um, there was a part that I just like maybe 50 pages worth that I thought were kind of odd and like displaced and didn't really make sense to me. Um, and this one, I didn't have that. It was just hard to get into at the beginning. My only other slight comment where it's a little different from Cackle is that it didn't have that cozy feel to me that Cackle did. Um, but I had such a book hangover when I finished this book. I just wanted to read another Rachel Harrison book. Um, I'm thinking about rereading Cackle in October, but I don't want to do it yet. And so I went on Libby and I tried to check out 
the audiobook version of The Return that she wrote. It was her first book, I think. Um, and of course, everybody else is feeling the same way I am right now, apparently, because it's on hold. I, why? Why? I don't know. But I have to wait. And as soon as I can, I'm going to read it. <laughs> so excited, though. And for AJ Dunn's Killer Reads Book Club, um, I read Double Indemnity by James M. Kane. I don't know if you've seen this movie. It was a movie that came out in the 40s, I think. Um, I want to say Ingrid Bergman was in it. Um, I don't really want to give anything away in case you're interested in reading it. It's only 115 pages long, so it's a real nice, just read it on a Saturday morning kind of book. Um, I read through it really fast. I enjoyed it. It's interesting how far we have come with women and how we view women. Um, and I, I sometimes I think, well, do, don't we kind of view, don't, doesn't society view women the same way it always has? No, not when you read something like this. You realize how much women were just, just the pretty little thing, you know, down the street that needed to be rescued. So there's that. You've got the damsel in distress or the vixen who just is like a villain, you know. Um, I felt like the character development was really lacking here. And also there was no development for the setting. And to me, the setting needs to be another character in the book, maybe even a house or an office or a car or something like that. I love when places or means of transport or something become another character in a book, but there was just not a lot of description in here. I, so I had very little attachment to anything about the book or the characters. Oh, and I also found Walter, the protagonist, to be very irritating. <laughs> um, he overthinks things to the point where I felt like the author was really trying to walk me through things that I like to think most people are smart enough to figure out on their own without it being spelled out completely or said so completely. There was just so many details of what he was doing and why he was doing it. Not in like a, a beautiful writing kind of way, but like an annoying, like, um, plotting kind of way. Um, so yeah, I, <laughs> I did enjoy it though. It was a good time. It was entertaining. Um, and this one was three stars for me. Let me know if you have read Mildred Pierce or Postman Always Rings Twice, because those are both movies that I really enjoy. And I'm wondering if maybe, since he wrote those two books, maybe I would really like those. Um, and I have not seen this movie, so I plan on watching it soon. I'm here to do the last segment for this vlog finished two more books and then a DNF. I listened to The Only One Left by Bradley Sager. That one is about a, a woman named Kit who is a caretaker and she's had something in her recent past happen that has made it hard for her to get a job and so she gets told that she can come back to work if she goes and works at this place that no one wants to work. It's to be a caregiver for somebody who she's been told his, or the town thinks, killed her whole family. So she goes to care for this woman and all kinds of stuff starts happening. All these things start being revealed and information comes out and it's, it's very entertaining and good. The house is like another character in the book, which I love. I loved all the 80s references. Um, Kit drives a Ford Escort, and um, she's a big fan of reading Sidney Sheldon books. I mean, that was so 80s. Listening to Duran Duran or uh, Let's Get Physical on the radio, um, Let's Get Physical by Olivia Newton-John. I pictured her to be Virginia Madsen in the 80s. Um, 
I, I have fun with that sometimes, assigning actors or actresses to different roles in uh, different books. There were a lot of twists in this book. Some I really enjoyed and some I just kind of felt were really obvious or um, sometimes it felt a little too twisty. Almost as if the author took a bunch of twist tropes and wrote down ones they wanted to put in a book, but instead of putting them in two or three books, they jammed them all into one book. It's kind of what it felt like. But I know a lot of the mysteries are like that, especially the older fashion mysteries where there's so many um, twists that it gets kind of exhausting by the time you're done reading it. That's how this one felt for me. Um, I did really enjoy it though. I recommend it and I gave it four stars. The Only One Left and Divine Rivals, which is the next book I read, had some parallels to them that I thought was interesting or that I thought were interesting. One, they both had typewriters as a big part of communication in the books. And two, they both had a character in the book named Kit. It's kind of interesting, right? Like how interesting that I was reading those two books at the same time. It just felt so parallel, but yet so different. So Divine Rivals is by Rebecca Ross and it's a YA, I think it's romance fantasy. Um, about a about a girl who is living in a time of war and she's trying to be a journalist and gosh I don't want to say a lot about this I don't want to give anything away I really liked going into it totally blind I kind of want that for you too if you're going to read it um, but yes there are a lot of typewriter references and type a typewriter or typewriters being used to communicate there is a character named Kit or nicknamed Kit. The writing had this sweet vintage feel to it um, in an innocent way, almost in, in a way that almost reminded me of Richard Paul Evans. Um, I'm a really big fan of the Christmas Box series and it, it felt like that to me kind of. A very beautiful old-fashioned kind of style of writing. I really felt like this was a fun adventure to go down there was a huge cliffhanger at the end. Um, I cannot wait for the next book to come out. I wish it was out now. Um, I give this one 4.5 stars, but I rounded it up to five. <laughs> and then I read Broken Dolls by Mie K. Watson. This one is an extreme horror book and the author does write in the beginning kind of a warning to people that it's extreme horror and what's in there. And I read that and I felt very prepared for it. But when I started reading it, I didn't feel like I had prepared myself enough for how much of an extreme horror it was, just how triggering it was, um, to the point where it really upset me even. And I read horror novels pretty regularly. Um, I'm a pretty big fan of extreme horror. But this one felt like um, well, 95% of the book felt like it was for shock value and disgust value. And I didn't get the point in it. And I never, I, like, I didn't understand the why of it. Um, why were these things happening? Why was this person doing this, these things to other people? Maybe if I understood that more, I would have enjoyed it more, but I just felt like I needed more character development. I needed more of a storyline about, like I said, why this stuff was happening. Um, I just got to where I couldn't stomach it anymore. So I skipped to the last few pages just to see how it ended. And then I was done. So I guess that would count as a DNF, but I don't know who I would recommend it to. Um, it was just really gross and really disturbing and disgusting for no reason. Like just because it's fun to be disturbing or just to, because it's fun to add as much shock value as possible into one book. That's kind of what it felt like. Um, so if you have read the other book that me, Kay Watson wrote, let me know if you liked it or not, because I have it. And I don't know if I want to put myself through that. Um, if it's like that, 
because I'm literally nauseous. I literally feel like I need to shower and bleach and brush my mouth out with strychnine or something. Like I'm so disgusted after reading that book. So, um, if that's how the other one is, I want to know so I can just avoid it and just donate it or something. I don't, I don't want to be that grossed out. I mean, so that is it for what I'm reading for, um, August. I think I have started, uh, two new audiobooks and one or two more physical books. Uh, but I don't think I'll finish any of them before the month is up. And if I do, I'll just talk about them in my next vlog or in my next, I'm going to be doing a quick review wrap up, um, at the end of the month. So I will probably, if I'm, if I'm done with them by then, I'll put them in there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this vlog. I hope that you've been having a good end to your summer. I don't know about you, but I'm definitely ready for fall. <laughs> Happy reading. Bye.